How's it going guys? In today's video, we're going to be going over how we can create our very own chatbot API in Python. And we're going to be able to host this on the internet so that anyone can use it. So it's a very neat, cool project for getting started in Python. But what you're going to get is something that looks similar to this. So usually you have an endpoint such as an API and it's going to take an input such as hello or goodbye. If you type in hello, it's going to give you this JSON response that you can later use in your own project. It's well structured and it gives you an accuracy rating, the input you put inside, and it's going to give you a response that you can later decide how to create. And you can also insert something else such as goodbye. And it's going to say, see you later. And it's going to give you accuracy of one because it's a accurate reading. Otherwise, if you give it something such as a random combination of letters, it's going to say could not understand and it's going to have an accuracy of zero because it had absolutely no idea what it was doing there. And as you can see, it's just going to return to us a dictionary for each request we make. So if you find that interesting, we can go ahead and open up a editor and I'm going to be using PyCharm for this, but we just need to create a new empty file and let's just close this for now and the first thing you want to do is open up the terminal and type in pip install flask because we're going to be using the flask framework to make this work and as soon as you've got that down you can go ahead and import flask or actually we need to do this differently so from flask we want to import the main flask module and we want to import the request module then from collections we want to go ahead and import named tuple. Now the very first thing you need to do when you're creating a Flask app is actually instantiate it. And you can just insert the name of the app itself and that's going to work perfectly fine. And for each page in your Flask app, you're going to have an endpoint. And the main endpoint is going to be called by app root. And each time we just load our website, it's going to call this endpoint. This is the bare endpoint. So if you have something such as apple.com and you insert that in the browser, this is going to be called immediately because this is the first endpoint that any website will have. It's just an empty backward slash. So this is the home page, in other words, or the index. So we can just call that index. And we're not going to do anything with this. We're just going to return a formatted string or it doesn't have to be formatted, but it is going to contain some HTML, which is going to be H1. And we're going to call it homepage with a closing tag. And you don't have to do this. This is just a placeholder. And just to make sure that everything's running correctly, go ahead and type in main and insert this placeholder, which checks if name is main and call app.run. Now, if everything is set up correctly, this should display to us this homepage over here. So go ahead and right click and run the program. And I already have an address in use. So let me go ahead and stop that first. So this happens if you're running two scripts at the same time under the same address. Now I'm just going to rerun the program and you should get an address like this running. This is your local IP address. You can just tap on that and it's going to take you to this home page which is just a dummy way of visualizing the data that you've created. So this is what it will look like if we run it on the internet right now. We're just going to get a home page. But what we want is to create that API endpoint by typing backslash API and inserting what we want. But if we do that, we're not going to get anything because we've not created the functionality for that in this very moment. So let's go ahead and improve our program by closing the console. And we're going to make some space in here because the first thing I want to do is create a model, which is going to be called response. And it's going to be a named tuple. And it's a named tuple of response, which is the type name and the parameters that it's going to include. So we're going to have responses and we're going to have an accuracy rating. And you'll see very shortly why we did this. I personally believe it's a lot easier to read and it's a lot more reusable if we do this, but go ahead and create a function right after that, which is called generate response. And it's going to take some sort of user input of type string, and it's going to return to us a response, which is that data type that we've just created. Now, I'm not going to cover how to create a full hardcore chatbot, but I will cover how you can create some sort of logic that you can return through the API. So here you have your function that calculates a response and we're going to get the lowercase input first, which is the user input.lower. 
And then we need to check if the lowercase input is equal to something such as hello. Then we can go ahead and return a response. And this response is going to hold two different kinds of data types. One is a response and one is an accuracy. So the response is going to be, hey there. And the accuracy will be one because we found the perfect response. L if LC input is equal to goodbye. And remember, this has to be in lowercase for the program to understand it. We're going to return the response of see you later with an accuracy rating of one. Else return response could not understand. And since we don't understand this, we're just going to return zero as the accuracy rating. So we're going to use this to generate a response for the user. But now let's go ahead and create another app root. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and type in at app.root and we're going to type in backslash API. Then of course we need to go ahead and assign this a function name, which I'm just going to call API. The name here does not matter, but as always, it's good if you keep it descriptive. And here we're going to type in user input is equal to request.arguments.get and we want to get the field of input. And this should match exactly the endpoint that you want to provide in your URL. And you can decide to include multiple of these. You just need to make sure that when you do this, you have the exact same endpoint in your API. So as you can see here, you need to make sure that input says input. Next, let's go ahead and get a response. And this is going to call generate response, which will take a user input. Now, all we want to do is return some JSON. So we're going to create a JSON file, which is just a dictionary in other words and it's going to contain an input, which is going to be the user input. It's going to contain a response, which is going to be equal to the response.response. .response. And we also have to go ahead and provide some accuracy, which is going to be equal to the response.accuracy. So right here, you might have noticed that we were able to access those using dot notation. And that's the only reason I decided to create this named tuple. And every time we load this web page, it's going to call this function over here. And all we wanted to do is return the JSON. So now we can actually go ahead and rerun this. And when you tap on your IP address, you can go ahead and specify that you want to call the API with the input of hello. And it's going to return to you a JSON file with all of the information that you decided to provide. And the accuracy will be set to one if you say hello and it will have input of hello and the response of hey there. So anybody can use this API in their own website. And you can even change this to something random as earlier. And it's going to say could not understand, the accuracy is zero, the input is that. So there's plenty you can do with that. So of course that covers the first part of this tutorial. Now let's go ahead and learn how we can host this online. 24 seven, so it just runs consistently for free. So for this, we're going to be using a website called Python Anywhere, and it's absolutely free to use. Just go ahead and click on pricing and sign up, then go ahead and create a beginner account. So here you need to specify a username, and I'm just going to provide epic user Python, provide an email, which should be your email, of course, and you need a password then agree to the terms and conditions and click on register. Now I'm not going to cover everything that's included in Python anywhere, but what matters most right now is that we go to web and we create our first application. So here click on add a new web application, click on next, click on flask, choose your Python version. I have Python 3.10, but 3.9 works as well and click on next. It's then going to generate this endpoint for you. So you're gonna have a free website to create API requests. And this is great if you have your own personal project, so you want to share something with a friend. Although you do need to refresh this every three months or else it will become deactivated. But I think it's a pretty sweet deal for a free API. But up next, just go down and locate your source code because we need to go to that directory and include our own source code. And as you can see, there's something called a Flask app which is going to look very similar to the code we just had to work with. But inside your project, you can go ahead and copy everything that's not this part over here. So everything until the imports, copy all of that, and you can just paste it inside here. Then make sure you save, and it's very important you click on this refresh symbol so it refreshes the website. And what we've practically done is hosted our code online and it's going to be live for the next three months. And unless we refresh it, then it's going to be live even longer. 
And to actually test this out, we can go back to Python Anywhere and click on web and then click on our domain, which is epicuserpython.pythonanywhere. And you'll notice that we'll have the same homepage as from earlier and that we can also go ahead and experiment with our API by typing API question mark input equals hello. And just like that, now we have it available online for anybody to use. And this means also that if you type this into your browser right now, it's going to work. You can use my API live. Although if I do not refresh this API after three months, chances are that this link will not work. But it works exactly the same as from Python. You can go ahead and type in goodbye and you can insert your own phrases and it's going to return to you this JSON response, which you can use in your projects or you can sell it to somebody else. And that just about covers this entire video for creating the world's simplest chatbot, which can be hosted online for free 24 seven. But with that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.